of the first things you notice about this garden bench are the angles. You can see that the top has the edges and the ends cut at an angle, and that the legs sit at an angle to the floor. Even the stretcher on the end is cut at an angle. Now, it may seem like all these angles make the whole bench seem a little more complicated to build, but it's actually not the case. It's pretty easy. I'm going to show you how it all works by starting with the legs. You can see I have my leg blanks here already cut to their final width. Now what I want to do is cut the bevel at the top and the bottom edges, and this is going to allow the legs to sit at their correct angle. I tilted the saw blade 10 degrees. Then, using an auxiliary fence on the miter gauge, I cut a bevel on one end of each leg. That takes care of the first set of bevels. Now, before I cut the bevels on the other end of the leg, I'm going to attach a stop block to the end of the miter gauge fence. Now, this is going to make sure that all four legs are exactly the same length. To do this, I'm going to flip the board over and make the second cut. After cutting the legs to length, I'm ready to move on to some joinery. And that involves cutting a dado on the inside edges of all the legs. Now this dado is going to be angled to match the angle at the top of the legs. Now there's one thing that I want to point out. Because the legs are tilted when the bench is complete, that means you can, you can see here what the dado is going to look like. But that means that the dados are cut at mirror images to each other. It sounds tricky, but it's actually pretty easy to do. You're going to start by marking the edge of the dado from the bottom of the leg. Then I'm going to use a bevel gauge to mark that angle. Now I've set the bevel gauge to match the end of the leg. Now I can slide it up into position for the first lower edge of the dado, and then mark the top edge of the dado as well. To mark the opposite dado in the other piece, I'll align the two legs. Then I'll flip the bevel gauge over and align the bevel gauge with where the dado meets and the inside joint here. Then I can mark the bottom edge and the top edge. After laying out the location of the dados on the work pieces, the next step is to set up the table saw. Now you can see I've already installed a dado blade to make the cuts. Now what I need to do is rotate the miter gauge to match the angle of the dados. And for that, you can actually use the bevel gauge as well. So I'm going to hold the bevel gauge against the fence on the miter gauge. Now I'm going to rotate it until the dado blade and the bevel gauge are aligned. Now I can lock it down. To cut the dados, I'm going to start by making a cut at each end of the dado. Then I'll remove the remaining waste, making multiple passes across the blade. That takes care of one set of dados. To cut the mirror image dados on the other legs, I need to change my setup a little bit. I'm going to start by moving the miter gauge to the other slot. Then I need to rotate it to the opposite angle setting. From there, I can just repeat the process. Once that's done, I'm going to head over to the bandsaw and finish up the legs. There are just a couple other details to take care of on the legs, and I can do that here at the bandsaw. The first of these is to cut an arc on the bottom of each of the legs. To make the cut, I tilted the saw table to match the angle at the top and bottom of the leg. Then make a smooth, even cut, staying just to the waist side of the layout line. After sanding the arc smooth, I can move on to the other detail and that's to cut a taper on the outside edge of the leg. Here again, stay to the waist side of the line and make a nice straight cut. All I need to do now is to clean up the blade marks and sand the edges smooth, and then the legs are complete. A stretcher like this is used to connect the legs of the bench. Now, the end of the stretcher has been mitered. There's also shallow dados cut in each face. Now, the dados were angled using the same technique that Phil used earlier. Now, these angled dados interlock with the dados already cut in the legs. And get that just in there, just like that.
Now, even though they interlock, there's a lot of stress on this joint, so I want to reinforce it. And for that, I'm going to use dowels. Now, the dowels are going to pass through these holes drilled in the stretcher and into the legs. Now, drilling these holes is easy. The challenge is locating precisely where the holes need to be drilled in the legs. To do that, I'm going to use these. Now, these are dowel centers. They're just a metal plug with a really sharp point in the center. They just go into each hole, just like that. Sometimes you got to twist them to get them in. Then you take the matching piece, place it right over the top of them, and you want to tap it down. All right, let's take a look. Just pull this piece up. And now, I think you can see that there's an indent right there. And that indent is exactly where the center of the drill bit goes. But there's one more thing that we need to take care of before drilling. Now you remember that the legs are tapered or angled on the sides. And if I would set them on a drill press table like this, well, I'd end up with angled holes. They're not going to be perpendicular to that edge. So to solve the problem, I'm going to use a piece of the cutoff left over from tapering them. And then I'm going to tape it to the bottom of this workpiece. And now I can drill perfectly straight holes at the drill press. Once you get all the holes drilled, it's time for a little bit of dry assembly because you don't want any surprises when you start adding glue. Now there, that looks pretty good. Now, speaking of glue, since this project's gonna spend some time outdoors, it's a good idea to use a waterproof glue. Now all I have to do is take this apart, apply some glue to the dowels and the joints, and it's ready to go together. The base of the bench is nice and sturdy, so the next step is to add the seat. Now, it looks like the seat is attached to the bench with through tenons on the ends of the legs, but it's not. That's right, the seat's actually attached with ordinary wood screws, and then those are covered up by these false tenons, and that's what gives it the look of the through tenon. Well, there's a little bit of work left to do, so let's get started and get this project finished up. Well, Phil, I've got the seat trimmed to final size, the edges are beveled, and I've gone ahead and laid out the mortise locations here on the top. An easy way to create the mortises is to use a plunge router like this. Now, I've installed a pattern bit that has a bearing on the shank end. Now, for that to work, we need to create a template that has a rectangular opening here in the center. That can be kind of tricky to do. Actually, it's pretty easy to size the opening. The key is to make the template out of four strips of wood like this. The two inner strips match the width of the opening. Then you glue the outer strips to create the final size. Now, on the back side of the template, I've got some double stick tape here and here. So I'm going to peel the paper off. There we go. Now, I'm going to position the template right over my layout lines and press it down. Now I can use the router, plunge the bit into the workpiece, route around the outside, then route out the center, and finally, I'll square up the corners with a chisel. All right, Phil, well, I've just finished attaching the top here, and to do that, I drilled some pilot holes and then attached everything with a long screw like this. Well, the next step is to fill the mortises with these false tenons. They just fit right into place like that, and I made those at the table saw. I started with a long blank, then cut a bevel on each face. Finally, I cut the tenon to its final length. All that's left now is to glue those false tenons in place, and this project's complete. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides. Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. 
all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.